Hey, Shamabil. Oh, hello. How can I help? My name is Shamabil Yakub, and I'm an economist. How did we get here? To find out how we got here, we have to go back in time. When we're thinking about New Zealand's economic history, of course it begins with the arrival of Māori into New Zealand. Shaka, 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 bro. It was an economy that was based on agriculture, on fisheries. Property rights weren't a big thing. So we had the Māori economy that was trending along in a very sustainable way because it was all about stewardship and looking after the resources and with a very small population. And then colonization happened. And over a few decades, we just stripped the economy and the land bare. It was essentially an economic atom bomb that went off in New Zealand. We moved into what was more of an agrarian economy. About a third of our jobs were in the primary sector on the land. Uh, today it's less than 7%. New Zealand became very insular, particularly through the 50s and 60s when we were all about protectionism, all about trying to recreate manufacturing and economic activity within New Zealand. We used to disassemble cars at the port, bring them into New Zealand and reassemble them. But quite often we didn't do a very good job of it. That culminated in Robert Muldoon at the time really pursuing the Think Break projects where we would have these massive investments that would create big jobs. It was you know, things like petrol refining, it was around um, things like the big uh, dams. And because we borrowed so much money to try and do these things, we were near bankruptcy when the fourth Labour government came into power in the 1980s. The reforms of the 1980s were essentially another economic atom bomb that went off the entire way of living in New Zealand changed and we went from driving cars to good cars. We went from having a couple of TV channels to having many channels and when the smoke cleared what we found was an economy that was more diverse, that was stronger and more flexible. But today there is a lot of conversation around whether or not we went too far and whether we need to start changing again. And it's very much around the idea that we went too far in terms of relying on markets, we didn't go far enough in terms of protecting domestic industries or being more generous with our welfare system. So these are all ideas that we need to converse on, ideas that we need to debate. But the changes that happened in the 80s were very much part of something that was absolutely necessary at the time. New Zealand has been through this weird experience of globalization over time. We're trading significantly more with the world, but global businesses come to us as well. So New Zealand has a very high proportion of foreign companies that operate here, which has given us significant strengths in terms of bringing in ideas, capital, technologies into the country. But at the same time, it means that profits can leave the country. And for New Zealand-based companies, there is this tension, you know, should you support a local company or should you support a global company? What happened to work? 